Works 96.7 WORX. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. This is AJ Brammer in studio. It is the final Tuesday in the month of May and that means it is once again time for Cop Talk. Cop Talk is brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. We do Cop Talk from the studio here on Telegraph Hill. Joining me once again for today's program is the Sheriff of Jefferson County, Sheriff John Wallace. Sheriff, thanks so much for coming on the show. My pleasure, AJ. Thanks for having me. And also joining us for today's show, we have the Tobacco Prevention Specialist for King Stoddard's Health and also the Substance Abuse Coordinator for Jefferson County, Stephanie Bayer. Stephanie, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. All right, so Sheriff, diving right in, uh, what's new with your office? Well, I was going into the uh, summer months. Uh, we had a, had a great weekend. Uh, did have a, a few accidents, unfortunately. However, uh, you know, started off well. Just, uh, just a reminder to everyone that, uh, you know, of course, the kids are out of school now. Uh, summer activities have begun, so uh, just, just keep that in mind when you're out traveling about. But, uh, otherwise, uh, things are going well. Uh, we keep working hard uh, on narcotic issues in the uh, county, uh, both city, county, state, and in the town of Hanover. Uh, and, uh, it's, uh, it's working out well. We're going to continue to uh, progress in that and work hard and, uh, and make sure that we keep uh, the narcotics issue in our community under control. All right, that's definitely an issue that we want to keep an eye on. At all times. Absolutely. And again, you know, I always remind the public, give me a little tidbit of information that you can give us with regarding activity in or around your house or neighborhood. Uh, could be that clue that we need to, uh, to continue forward with an investigation. So don't ever hesitate. If you want to remain anonymous, uh, you can certainly do so. Uh, just give us, uh, give us a call and uh, give us that information. We would certainly appreciate it. And uh, kind of piggybacking off of that, obviously, you know, we have the uh, we have law enforcement that are pursuing those uh, drug-related activity, but also uh, helping people that are struggling with that. Is uh, that's kind of your your area of expertise, Stephanie? So you want to talk a little bit about uh, what you do? Yeah. So as a substance abuse coordinator, um, I'm in charge of the Coalition Against Substance Abuse. We meet. It's open to the public. Um, it's the third Wednesday of every month at noon at Boneyard Grill. So anybody wanting to come to be involved, that would be fabulous. The Sheriff's Department has been very supportive of our efforts. Um, we do a lot with justice, prevention, and treatment. Um, and talking on those points, KDH is also in the middle of doing their 2016 Community Needs Assessment. Um, and I have a few pre preliminary findings. We're still, we won't be done for a couple of months. Um, but to touch on some of the drug issues going on in our county, Hepatitis C is one major issue that we're finding. It's increased 44% from 2014 to 2015. So um, that be, could be coming from needles, sharing of needles. Um, I don't know if you want to touch on that a little bit, John, of what you've known about what's going on. Yeah, of course, the hypodermic needle uh, exchange program. Uh, again, what, so a year or so ago in, in Scott County due to the HIV and hepatitis outbreak. And, uh, you know, Unfortunately, we're finding a lot of those needles discarded in our in our county and in our community. So, on one hand, uh, I guess it has stemmed the tide uh, with regards to their issues over there. But uh, they have another problem that it's created, obviously, is these needles being being thrown out amongst our communities. It's very alarming to me. Uh, you, know, you want to help folks that uh, that are that are suffering from these addictions, but. More importantly, I certainly don't want any innocent person or a child to become infected with, uh, with any kind of disease because of uh, people's recklessness and not caring about, about other people. So it's kind of twofold for me, but uh, it's uh, continuing going on. Uh, we don't currently have that program here in Jefferson County, but again, we do feel some of the effects of it from the, uh, from the hypodermics being discarded here in our communities. Um, our tobacco rates are at 28%, which is a lethal gateway drug. Um, seeing people using meth, meth is a big concern. So the Coalition Against Substance Abuse, we get together, we try to um, form ideas how we can as an organization, as an organization with other community organizations as a whole, how we can help these people get the treatment that they need, um, try to give them education. We also provide grants, so anybody that's in those three categories, they're welcome to, um, we will be having a grant cycle coming up in January. Um, and they, they try to get things for people with Ruth Haven or the Jefferson House who um, are trying to help these people who get out of jail and that are living there trying to get back into the community and start working again as well. These are it's two areas of it's just two areas of the problem that I think you know are really important. You know, obviously getting the drugs off the street, but also the people helping people that have uh, fallen to that. And so, sheriff, I think that's you know. 
what SEPI and what the coalition do, it's a you really it's a big part of the fight against drugs. Well, it really is, and uh, that's why I'm really glad to have Stephanie here with us this morning. <clears throat> she does a great job with her programs at KDH, and, and as the coordinator of uh, CASA, she does an outstanding job working with law enforcement and the community in general to, uh, to meet some of these needs. But yeah, it just shows you uh, that uh, you know not only are we trying to arrest our way out of this uh, drug epidemic, that which we know we can't, uh, we're also trying to reach out. <clears throat> excuse me. In other ways, and and assist with the, with these issues, and, and CASA is surely certainly uh, one of those programs, along with a lot of the programs that we have at the county jail that we've implemented. Uh, we found those to be very beneficial, and uh, in working with uh, with people that uh, that do want to get help, uh, do want to get away from this style of life, and, and move forward. So, uh, uh, again, it's important that uh, that our community knows that we're we're trying to work on this in, in many different avenues, not just the fact that we want out and arrest people, and put them in jail. And we also have a list of all kinds of recovery um, meetings that are going on in the county. I think there's a, um, I don't, people are unaware of what's going on, that we actually do have people who meet at different churches and they can get the help. Um, if they want to just contact me, they I can get them a list, whatever it is, if it's alcohol, um, meth, any, anything, any kind of help, suicide prevention, anything like that. I think another big concern is we're seeing um, teens, pregnant women coming into the hospital who are um, on drugs, and so we're seeing an increase of highly addictive uh, babies that are drug addicted, so then they're in our facility for a long time. And, um, I can't say enough good things about those nurses who sit there and hold those babies who are crying as they're detoxing from the drugs. They do a great job of that at our OBGYN. That's yeah, an incredible effort for sure. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's, uh, like I said, it, uh, it takes all aspects of it uh, to, uh, to take care of this matter. Stephanie, how would they uh, get a hold of you if, uh, um, if they, they want some misinformation on Sure, they can give me a call at 812-801-0598. And then we also have um, an email, Jefferson, Coalition Against Substance Abuse at gmail.com. And we're actually in the process of working to get a website going up and running as well. So hopefully that will be coming in the next couple of months. So the Fight Against Drug is one that has a lot of different faces to it. So we have two of those faces here today, the, the law enforcement end of it with uh, Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and Stephanie Bear, the tobacco prevention specialist from Kingstoners Health and substance abuse coordinator for Jefferson County, focusing on recovery of those problems. We'll be back with more for Cop Talk. Uh, Sheriff, Stephanie, thank you both so much for coming on the show. It's always our pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Stephanie, we were just talking about this during the break. Um, the money for what you guys do with the Substance Abuse uh, Coalition, that's not tax dollars, correct? That's right, it's not. It's actually, um, we get funded through the court systems. So anybody that has been violated any kind of drug use or anything like that, alcohol use, been fined, um, that's how we get our funds. So then we turn that into, we, we do grants and we do community efforts and we try to help people so we turn it around. So yeah, it's not anything with tax dollars at all. Right, and you say obviously it's, you know, a lot of people, when they hear the word taxes, they kind of panic about a program or, you know, want to know what exactly this is doing. But this is obviously a, you know, this is obviously a, a, a very important cause. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm glad you brought that point up because it is funded, as Stephanie stated, through the, uh, through the courts and through fine money and, and not from uh, ta actual tax dollars. But this also shows, like again, like uh, how we're intertwined uh, with uh, with each other, law enforcement in the community, and with regards to the battle against narcotics. Uh, Chad Lewis, our county prosecutor, uh, does a great job. This program is uh, is very active in it and uh, and oversees the uh, the entire program. So uh, between him and, uh, and our volunteers and, and, uh, and our other employees, it's uh, it's working out very well. But, uh, as Stephanie stated, uh, you know, the public's welcome to come to the to the meetings. They're open. Uh, we encourage them to do so and, and come and get a feel and see what's going on. Because there's a lot of good things going on in the community with regards to that. Yeah. Obviously, you know, and the drug problem, we it's in the press all the time. It seems like you know, there's always stories about <clears throat> arrests getting made and you know, rings getting busted and dealers coming off the street, but. You don't really hear so much about the, you know, what comes next for the people that were involved, you know, that recovery aspect of it. Right, yeah. I mean, the thing is, I think people, what happens is they start using at a young age, and then they get, they're highly addicted. It's, you know, it's hard to get off that recovery. So what, what they do is if they get fined, um, I know that the, the jail has been doing some prevention in there as well with um, community corrections. 
and uh, River Valley Resources, is that correct? Yeah, we have, we have Life Springs at the, in the county jail, and uh, we also have our uh, GED program that, uh, that some inmates have chosen to get into that's uh, it's benefited uh, them, and, uh, and also the AA and NA programs are, are present in jail as well. So <clears throat> along with our faith-based, faith uh, it's, uh, it's been very beneficial. So it's just all these organizations coming together trying to help these people recover who want to recover. That's the key, I think. Um, they have to want to recover. If they don't, they're not going to, and they're just going to continue to abuse it. Now, I think on, on your end, Sheriff, you know, you obviously you see a lot of um, you see a lot of people come off the street, go into the jail system, but with all these resources available for them, you know, there are out of these negative issues, there are positives that can grow out of it. Right, there are a lot of positives, and, and I kind of want to hit upon them because we always look at the negatives and we see the arrest uh, day in and day out in our uh, local newspapers and <clears throat> on our radio stations. But uh, uh, there are a lot of positives that come out of it, and, and people do choose to uh, to get clean and get healthy. It amazes me when uh, people come into the jail, um, you know, what their physical makeup is, and then when they leave six, eight months later, uh, how different they look and how healthy they look. So, uh, yeah, jail can is something that nobody <laughs> wants to uh, to be in, and uh, but sometimes it's the only means uh, to get people in, get them clean, and, uh, and get them back out and give them that second chance. So uh, um, often I get letters from people that have, that have been in for a while and, uh, and maybe write or even stop by and see me and, uh, and actually thank us and thank the jail staff for, uh, for helping them get through uh, this difficult time in their life and, and how they turned their lives around. And, and I'll tell you, when they do that, it's just, uh, it's just very uplifting. It makes you realize, you know, what you're doing out here is, is all worthwhile. But, uh, yeah, you know, drug arrest and, and jail time's tough, but uh, sometimes that's the only means available to really to get uh, to get some folks clean and get them back on the right path. Beans, we have a guest speaker every month at our meetings. Um, coming up this month will be Ruth Haven. It's the house for women who they try to help them with in recovery. Um, I think that's the key thing too, is knowing what's going on in the community, education. We would love to have anybody who's uh, recovered come to our meetings and, and be a part of it. It would be wonderful. Um, I think we just, we need to get the word out that we are here and we are here to help people. So we want to do everything we can to help people recover. Uh, it's Stephanie Bear, the Tobacco Prevention Specialist for King Sutter's Health, as well as the Substance Abuse Coordinator for Jefferson County and Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace joining us once again for Cop Talk. Uh, Sheriff, I know we've been focusing a lot on, on drugs today, but you would want to talk about, you know, we always seem to have a scam or something going on in our area. We never quite get away from that. Yeah, you're right. We do, unfortunately, and, uh, and I know I bring this up every month, but I don't think I can bring it up enough because I constantly get calls about the IRS scam or another scam going around where, you know, they want your personal information, want you to send X amount of dollars to a location. Uh, and, uh, and I think the word's really getting out because the public is really doing an outstanding job of recognizing this and, uh, and letting us know. However, every once in a while, we do have, uh, unfortunately, one of our citizens uh, you know, falter to this. So again, I just want to remind everybody that never give your personal information out on the phone. The IRS is not going to call you and, uh, and demand money. Uh, these people are very threatening. They're, they're very good, unfortunately, at what they do. Uh, don't fall for it. Uh, give us a call and let us know. So just just be aware. Uh, it's too good to be true that it's it's not legit more likely. So let us know. Well, it's also I think it's um, an important element of you know fighting those scams, you know, letting people be aware of that is social media. I know I've seen on the, the Sheriff's Department's Facebook page, people have talked about <coughs> scams. I know nowadays, you know, with the internet, if I, for me, if I get a phone call and I don't know the number, I'll let it, you know, I won't answer it, and then if I'm by the computer, you go know, type that number in real fast, and everybody else that's been called by that number yeah. is reported to some website somewhere, you know, letting people know. So yeah. just letting your office know, I think that's the most important thing you can do. Absolutely. A couple weeks ago, we actually had uh, somebody calling, you know, saying somebody from the Sheriff's Department, Jersey County Sheriff's Department, was going to be at their house to arrest them on an outstanding warrant if they didn't send X amount of dollars. Uh, we put that out. It was on a Saturday afternoon, so we put it out on social media as quick as we could. But uh, that also is a scam that's been going around uh, nationwide. I can assure everybody. If you got a warrant for you, we're not going to call you and let you know. So uh, um, that's not the way we operate. But uh, just just be aware uh, that these uh, these games are ever evolving and uh, they continue. So uh, if you have one or if you have an issue, uh, check it out first before you do anything. Definitely, yeah. Just be 
be cautious, be aware, you know, make, make good choices. Yes, we certainly don't want you to lose any money, that's for sure. That is for sure. Now, uh, Stephanie, going back to um, stuff going on with your office, once again, you have a, so you said you have an event coming up, correct? Or you have a, well, you always have guest speakers coming up. Do you want right, to talk, yes. about, you want to talk um, about that? Yeah, so I just wanted to reiterate to everybody that the Coalition Against Substance Abuse meets every third Wednesday of the month at the Boneyard Grill at noon. Our guest speaker this um, coming, coming up would be Ruth Haven House. And they'll touch on what they do, and it's a good community event, and they want anybody to come that wants to be there. Excellent. And once again, if anybody needs to get in touch with your office, uh, what's the number for that? 812-801-0598 or they can contact me via email, um, coalition against substance abuse at gmail.com. Uh, Stephanie Bear, anything else you'd like to add before we go? No, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being on the show. I would just encourage anyone that is reaching out and, and looking for help uh, that, that they contact uh, Stephanie's office. Uh, like I said, she has that information in which she can give them to, uh, to seek treatment and see, seek the relief they need from narcotics. So uh, please don't hesitate to give her a call. Like I said, she uh, does a very good job and, and very willing to help. So uh, reach out. If you need us, reach out to us. We're here to help. Sure, if anything else you'd like to add on, on your end of things. <laughs> I just want everybody to be safe and uh, enjoy the summer months and again remember that uh, that our kids are out and about and, uh, and the ones that have pools a lot of pools out there remember the pool safety uh, we certainly don't want any tragedies from you know, these issues all right sheriff thanks thank you so much for coming on the show thank you very much that is jefferson county sheriff john wallace joining us once again for a cop talk and big and thanks to Stephanie Bear, the Tobacco Prevention Specialist at King's Daughters Health and the Substance Abuse Coordinator for Jefferson County for joining us for the program as well. That will do it for this month's edition of Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Service. We will join you again the last Tuesday in the month of June for more Cop Talk. Till then, stay tuned to Works 96.7 WRX for more of the best of the 80s, 90s, and now. I'm AJ Brammer. Thanks for tuning in. Back to the music on Works 96.7 WORX. Mm -hmm.